what is science? People coming out of a university with a master's degree or a PhD, you take them into the field and they, they literally don't believe anything and this is a peer-reviewed paper. It's the only thing they accept. And you say to them, but let's observe, let's think, let's discuss, they don't do it. It's just, is it in a peer-reviewed paper or not? That's their view of science. I think it's pathetic. Gone into universities as bright young people, they come out of them brain dead, not even knowing what science means. They think it means peer-reviewed papers, etc. No, that's academia. And if a paper is peer-reviewed, it means everybody thought the same, therefore they approved it. An unintended consequence is that when new knowledge emerges, new scientific insights, they can never ever be peer-reviewed. So we're blocking all new advances in science that are big advances. If you look at the breakthroughs in science, almost always they don't come from the center of that profession, they come from the fringe. And in a recent video, I'd shown an excerpt from a surveying training website called Learn CST, which was run by the National Society of Professional Surveyors in America. And the webpage in question was called Curvature Definitions for Land Surveyors. And the last definition on that page was explaining how land surveyors include six centimeters of correction per one kilometer of measured distance to account for the curvature of the Earth. Obviously, that is something they wouldn't have to do if the Earth was flat. That wouldn't happen if the Earth were flat. You would simply see the boat getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it went farther away, but you'd be able to see the whole thing with the same proportions. One last thing, which should be obvious, okay. if you pay attention and think about it. If you send a ship straight to the horizon, right. eventually it begins to disappear until it's no longer visible beyond your horizon. Right. And you should ask yourself, what kind of surface would produce that result? seafarers knew this right and so what however flat they would have imagined the earth to be they, they couldn't have they couldn't have accepted it to be completely flat because otherwise you would never not see the ship and in the video i also included a demonstration that someone had done using a theodolite across a lake to show that the lake itself follows the curve of earth again does not accept that refraction is at play. I've been saying refraction is at play. I've been saying your survey methods are not conclusive, in fact, very skewed based on refraction. The tip of this rock appears to be touching the fourth line down in the left image, but in the right image, it appears to be nearly touching the fifth line, which is approximately where the mirror line appears. In the right image, the top of the flag on the boat, which again is six inches above the water, appears at what would be in the water on the left image. Here's a look at the boats at approximately 700 feet from the observer each day. Do this for yourself. Look at the horizon here. And look at the horizon here. Here it's higher. Here it's lower. Here it's higher. Here it's lower. The light isn't the only thing that's displaced. The entire horizon drops. Boop. This is now a false horizon because it is created by refraction, which is what happens in a mirage 
over distance. Refraction at that distance is one quarter of an inch. So that will move it up. You will flip in the script on us, folks. It's refractions working the opposite as they claim it is. <laughs>